On tonight's episode, I'm dressing the part. Oh, and impersonating a real ranch hand. I'm looking for a construction worker and an Indian to find out why this couple. I think we were meant to do this. I would say it's fate and faith. Gave up a lucrative life in the corporate world. We were just looking for a place to get away from computers and email. For the Old West. The crew and I are on the range in Colorado to meet Tom and Darcy Carr and witness a true old-fashioned cattle drive. But first, we got to figure out how to film it. <laughs> Look at that. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I predict some, some kind of calamity. I think we're going to lose a camera at the least. Good, okay. Let's head out. If you look at the towns that are like along the interstate going into Denver from here, each of the towns are about 18 miles apart. Right. And that sprung up from cattle drives because that's about how far you drive cattle in a day. It's big. Isn't it awesome? We came out here and just fell in love with it as guests and... Next thing you know, next thing you know. Yeah, we had no this... idea we would ever be doing this. Well, where'd you guys meet? in Denver at work. We were just looking for a place to get away from computers and email and cell phones and all that. So Darcy said this would be a perfect place to go visit. So we came here three years in a row and uh, just like she said, just fell in love with it. As glamorous as all that sounds, life in the fast paced corporate world took a toll on the cars. It was just constant travel. Darcy would drop me off usually on a Sunday at Denver International pick me up on the following Friday, you know, do the yard work or whatever on Saturday, back to the airport on Sunday. And, um, you know, that was kind of our life. You know, right. It was just, hello, goodbye, and, and uh, you know, calls from some hotel room. So one day somebody says, let's just buy this ranch we love. Well, actually what happened was, Darcy's in the shower, and I call and book our reservation for the coming year, and then the previous owner answered the phone and said, well, we're not taking any reservations. We're actually gonna put the ranch up for sale. I said, you don't have a buyer. She said, no. And I said, uh, what are you doing on Tuesday? Really? Yeah. So I knock on the shower door and I said, hurry up and get out here. She said, what's wrong? And I said, nothing. We're going to buy the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> she said, well, you know, we, we don't even know what we're doing. And I said, it's all about hospitality and horses, right? So we can figure this out. You kind of make it sound simple. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> After what feels like miles of riding, I'm starting to wonder if the cars actually own any cows at all. And then we see them. Well, we have some cows over here. Why don't I draw out the formation? You got all your cows in here. So you got your trail boss is up here. And then you've got a cowboy here and a cowboy here. And then your flanks are back here. A couple years ago, Tom would have been talking strategy in a conference room and doing all this with a PowerPoint. Well, you can take the guy out of the office, but you can't take the office out of the guy. We got enough people for all this? We're gonna, we're gonna make it work. <laughs> As Tom continues to outline our single-minded proposition, it's clear there's gonna be multitasking and team cooperation. We're all gonna be on the same page while thinking outside the box and robustly executing a synergistic full press across the board strategy. In other words, we're gonna go get some cows, assuming Jones can keep up. People say to me, Mike, how in the world do you get those fantastically interesting shots on somebody's gotta do it? And I say, well, typically what we do is make a guy walk out in the middle of nowhere and set up a camera. Now there's a discussion about taking the drone a little white guy right there, running that up in the air a couple hundred feet and buzzing it over the herd. The general consensus is it'll be fine. <laughs> we're gonna head right into this herd, we're gonna try and get them together, and then we're gonna start forming our positions to move them. And there's that unforgettable shot our cameraman went out in the middle of nowhere to get. Bless his heart. You see that group over there, Mike? That's what we're gonna go get. And then we're gonna bring those guys over to meet up with these and then we'll move them all together as one. Gotcha. Did you get all that? I'm going over there. Just kind of push these guys so they start walking that way. Okay. Mm. Yeah, boom, yeah. You know how it is. 
They're big and placid and slow-moving animals, unless you spook them. Then they're neither placid nor slow-moving, just big and scared, which tends to change the dynamic for everyone. Be careful. <laughs> Slow down. Hop, 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 hop. Hi, they're coming your way. Okay. The trick here is to make sure none of the cattle get lost. Get him, Mike. Before too long, me and a veteran cowpoke named Ike have rounded up the herd. Well, I was there anyway. Ike did most of the actual rounding. You get the idea. They run off. You go get them. You bring them back. So we're on course, Tom. We are on course. What could possibly go wrong with a drone? If you can hear me, it's that drone. I'm guessing maybe they can hear the drone uh -oh. after all. Yeah. They have that drone. I'd answer that question. Be a pretty shot, though. Well, I'm learning firsthand it is not so easy to lead cattle to water. My crew, however, can't get there fast enough. These guys are going to be exhausted. <laughs> a story about a cattle drive is really turning into a story about how to shoot a cattle drive, and it's not simple. It's not simple for a variety of reasons. That was one of them right there. The horses, they pretty much want to do what they want to do. Our cameramen, for the most part, are on the ground, running, trying to keep up. Troy, of course, is sitting backwards on his pony, which is super exciting. Poor Jones. These guys have been literally running for miles. <laughs> Sorry, Jones. <laughs> These guys have been running for two and a half hours. <laughs> Yeah, I would just plan on... Uh, <laughs> Troy's, trying, <laughs> Troy's trying to plan his camera move. <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> Troy says, can you, can you bring the herd over this way? <laughs> Come on, cows. Well, the business of running a ranch. I mean, I can't imagine the average person has the first clue. We didn't. We didn't have any idea. We've been extremely blessed with very odd circumstances that helped us through the tough times in the beginning of right. uh, starting a project like this. Just comedy of error stuff. You basically Forrest Gumped your way through the whole deal. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget the look on the previous owner's face. I showed up in shorts, flip flops, <laughs> and a t-shirt. <laughs> right. He's like, what are you doing? And, and that's how little I knew. I just, yeah. I'm like, I don't know. So I'm learning. I'm learning. So for a year, I learned where all the electrical systems were, where all the water lines were how to winterize, how to de-winterize. I didn't know any of that stuff. But at 46 years old, mm -hmm. you basically went all in. All in. We have to believe a lot in fate. Yeah, we do. I mean, it's kind of Do you of really? Like, I think so. I think, I think we were meant to do this. Yeah, I would say it's fate <laughs> and faith, or faith in God. We just feel like if we work hard and do the right things, that the right things will happen. Yeah. And it's just blind faith. How many times did you fall? More times than I could count. It wasn't smooth sailing, but every obstacle we came about, it just worked out. Well, the boat's still floating. Yeah. You know, just the whole notion of reinventing. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, it's, look, that's, I don't think everybody has a fantasy of owning a ranch, but everybody no. has a fantasy of pulling the pin, mm -hmm. right? And just yeah. saying, you know something? Enough, enough with my blankety blank. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this, mm -hmm. but they never do it. Right. Almost never. I know, I would agree. You did it. Yeah. Transitioning from corporate employees to working ranch owners doesn't happen by accident. Neither does getting a herd of cows from point A to point B. But hey, if it were easy, everybody would be doing it. We're going to go through this gate, and then you're going to stand back somewhere in there where you can still see the cattle and get a count. Right. And then I'm going to go on the other side, Mike, and right. I'm going to do the exact same thing you're doing. OK, great. And then we're going to compare counts. <laughs> OK, good. Okay. Like most businesses, a cattle drive is all about inventory control. And here, one lost cow equals a lot of missing hamburger. So basically, my job is to count. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to count. I'm going to count real good. And that's my favorite type of traffic jam, by the way, yeah. <laughs> when they're blocking the road. <laughs> Once again, we're in the way of the basic task at hand. Uh, the crew is taking up a fair amount of room. And uh, the cows don't want to come to the gate on account of it. So we're, we're managing that right now. Hundreds of tons of cattle, each with its own idea of where it would like to go, will have to thread this needle. All I have to do is sit here and count them.
And it begins. There's one. There's two. They're going, Lisa. 23, we'll be 24, right. 25, 26, 27. 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 60, 61, 38, 49, 40, 40. I've counted sheep. I've counted cards. I've counted my blessings. I've even counted my chickens just before hatching. But this is a first. One, two, that's three more. Okay, Mike. <laughs> Million dollar question. Well, count these three. Yep. I got 234. <laughs> you are hired. Yeah? That's exactly what I got. No kidding. Yeah. Nice job. It may seem like a simple thing, getting a herd of cattle to a watering hole, but it's a long way from the hustle and bustle of the life Tom and Darcy left behind. This is just the kind of simple thing they were looking for. So we drove some cattle. So what we say, 236? We got them all. Dozens and dozens of cows <laughs> led through the Badlands, through inclement weather, through hostels and all kinds of adversity to a nice pool of cool water. We, uh, I don't want to overstate it, but we... Too late. Well, <laughs> I overstated it. <laughs> we saved their lives, <laughs> I know. I don't know what cattle drive you were on with this inclement weather. Give it up for Troy. Didn't fall off once. Well done. Shooting backwards. Neat trick. Get the loop open. Mm -hmm. Then when you throw it, your hand is right towards the target. How hard can it be? Let me show you. That's a long way away. Oop. There you go. Yeah, it's real good. That was a real good one. Ask me nice, I'll show you how to do that later. <laughs> you got it. Yay! OK. <laughs> as easy as that proved to be, I can't imagine a moving target will present any further challenges. All right, if I just get this right the first time, can we go home? Oop, no, no good. But I've been wrong okay. before. Right. A lot. Oh, look, he's coming right at me. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. You got his ear? Most TV shows wouldn't leave until they captured it happening. But I, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit Marvin in the head. <laughs> I'm gonna knock my hat off. You're gonna get upset because I hit your animal. The whole thing's gonna go off the rails. However hard I'm making this look, it's much harder. Much. I mean, it's 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 almost. Yeah. Here, 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 here. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this back to you. Yeah. You know, what we try to teach here too is that if you notice, we do pretty much everything on horseback. Very little mechanical stuff. Why is that important to you? I mean, why, why is it important to, to preserve? I mean, it's not just a way of life, but you're talking about specific techniques. Yep. Why does that matter? That cattle drive we did today, we could do it on ATVs. Sure. A lot uh, of places and some do. do. Oh, you're right. A lot do. We want to teach the way things were done, you know, 150, 200 years ago. It's, this is a part of the American culture. This is a part of what, you know, I think makes us strong as a country, as a nation, as a people. And I think it's important that we keep that going. What you're talking about is that weird space between sort of efficiency and effectiveness and, and when do you sound like a, a curator mm -hmm. and where's that, uh, where's the line? Yeah. I mean, if you look out here right now, other than the hay barn, it didn't look any different in 1840. And I just think to me, it's the same thing as, you know, a, a school class going to the Smithsonian. <laughs> you know, that this is the way things were done. This is the way they still can be done. And this is the way we choose to do them. It's easy to see that Tom and Darcy take great pride in the care of their animals and in the stewardship of the land while preserving the noble heritage of the American cowboy and the Old West. Their leap of faith turned their favorite vacation spot into their home and their livelihood. So Mike, did you feel like you got a good feel for what our life's about here? I mean, I get this, I'm still not entirely sure about you. <laughs> but I mean, no, it's a, it's a hard thing to do to leave 
Yeah, well, uh, something secure, anything secure. You know, I joke about it. The people that loved me were Hertz, Marriott, United, you know? <laughs> and there was no work-life balance. There was no spending the quality time with Darcy that I wanted to spend. Right. You know, I'm flying the back of the plane at United. No. You know, uh, Hertz doesn't know who I am. <laughs> but your horse knows you. My horse knows me. You hit the lotto, brother. <laughs> I'm not saying packing up and leaving civilization for the vast reaches of the American plains is for everybody. But for Tom and Darcy Carr, they've managed to do it and stay pretty civilized.